The past two days I've consistently tried to film videos and I'll get like halfway through a video and then something comes up where I have to stop filming. It's been a little bit annoying. However, today I have all day free. So two days ago we went up, first of all, I found a mysterious part that I've been looking for for the EG33 for months now and we finally got it. I finally got the crank sprocket. So we have a crank sprocket on the car, however the one on the car is not absolutely perfect to how we need it. Um, so the way that this little trigger system works on here is those are all crank trigger teeth on there that go around the crank sprocket and what those do is they send a signal to... I want to say it's a it's not a reluctor I, it's I think it's a Hall effect sensor and the way that it works is it works off of wavelengths so when a when a tooth of the crank sprocket passes over or a trigger passes over the sensor it makes a wavelength goes up over down if the spacing between the teeth aren't equal it's not going to send a consistent trigger pattern to the ECU and you can only calibrate it so much in the ECU um, from what I've been reading and seeing. So. so I was finally able to pick up a second crank sprocket. It took like four months to find one of those. Today, I want to go buy a welder and I want to learn to fabricate and weld. This is not, I'm not going to be good immediately or overnight. I'm just going to go to Harbor Freight and snag like one of their Vulcan welders. Um, from what I've seen online and the reviews, they seem like pretty good welders. So let's go get one. Let's go get a welder. Ah. Before I go and grab a welder, we need to jump on Melanie's car real quick, and then we go grab a welder. So Melanie has a 17 Impreza, as you guys know. You guys are also aware that we're looking for a new car for her. We're trying to find her a GTI. However, the Impreza is still being her daily driver right now. And with that being said, um, the car's got about 60,000 miles on it, and we've seen like a decrease in fuel economy with the car. Granted, it could probably use a walnut blasting on the valves to help clean off some of that carbon buildup, but we're also guessing that there might be some schmoo or some particulate in the fuel tank. If you guys have ever pulled like a fuel pump out of your car you'll see like small micro deposits of like crap and like poo sitting at the bottom of your fuel tank um, and with that the case the fuel pump sucks that stuff up it pushes it through the system it can get caught on the inside of fuel lines and whatnot so what I've always done and I've used this on a plethora of my Subarus that are on gasoline um, not necessarily E85 cars but all the gasoline cars whenever I tend to buy a used car I like to put some type of like fuel system cleaner through the car to like push out a whole bunch of the junk uh, burn it through so that's what we're gonna be doing real quick to hopefully restore some of the some of the good MPGs in this Impreza. So our friends over at Tecron sent over some of their complete fuel system cleaner. I've used this stuff on a couple cars in the past and it seems to work pretty well in increasing or getting back our miles per gallon. And especially with something like this, like it is direct injected, so we're not gonna be able to get everything off. We're not gonna be able to clean the backs out of the valves, but we can still clean everything out of the system, which is what we're gonna do real quick. Ooh, boop, we need to vacuum in here, Jesus. Come right here, open you up. Up. We are good to put this stuff in. It says right there, uh, make sure you got a low tank, then fill up your tank so that way it can mix and do all the fun stuff in the fuel system like that. Put the cap off, we can just go ahead and stick you right in there, let it do its thing. So that fuel system cleaner is going to do a couple things. It's going to help clean out the fuel system of any like poo that might be stuck in there. If do you have like a super old car and you've never cleaned a fuel system or anything like that? Um, it can restore some of your engine power as well. So this should help bring back some of those good MPGs until we get a GTI on the channel. Then we'll probably run one of these through the GTI as well. Um, just to make sure. I mean, it's just something I like doing with used cars. Is... Oh, I made a mess. So additional information will be down below in the description about this complete fuel system cleaner from Tecron. If you guys are looking to use this in your cars, which if you have a used car, you've recently bought a used car, or you haven't cleaned your fuel system in a while, highly advise doing that. Um, it's kind of like, like a preventative maintenance thing. It's not like a maintenance item, but it's like a preventative maintenance item just to help keep things clean. It'll help our Impreza. I bought a welder. I did it. I'm gonna learn to fabricate. Well, Matt and I are both gonna start playing with the uh, the welder and fabrication stuff on this. Um, I've n I've welded once and I was mediocre at best, and then I licked the weld right after I welded it, and I burned my mouth. Don't ask me why, don't ask me how, I'm not gonna do it again, but let me show you what I got. So I went over to Harbor Freight and I got their, the best welder they had. I've seen a lot of good reviews about this Vulcan one. This will do MIG and TIG. So if you don't know what MIG welding is, MIG welding is when you, it, it's like a wire feed. Versus TIG welding, you use a stick to kind of weld. Um, so right, this will do both MIG and TIG. I wanted something that would do both and not just one or the other. So that way, as we continue to learn, as we continue to fabricate, and as we continue to grow, we have 
have the option of doing both. Right now in here, we're gonna have to be using 110 because we don't have 220 anywhere in the garage. Um, so we're, this will do 110 and 220. So uh, with the welder, I also got a face mask because I don't wanna burn my eyeballs off. And then I also just got some of these gloves because I also don't wanna melt my hands. The screen on there will also set things up for us. So that way, if we say, hey, we're doing this material thickness, um, it'll, and it just, it gives you a whole bunch of inputs. So we're gonna play with it here in a minute. So let's get this thing opened um, and let's just try to weld some stuff. Let's do some welding. That's not bad though. And then it gives us like a chart. We've got this guy, our regulator, the gas cord. Probably won't be as pretty as a pig, but it's the one where you knock it off afterwards. So this thing's actually pretty neat. I've got it just hooked up to power and plugged into the wall right now, but I feel like this is gonna be a really good welder for us to learn on. Uh, we're, we're about to run to the welding store to go get some gas to be able to actually practice. I think we're gonna grab some argon or tri gas. I don't know what we're getting yet, um, but let me show you guys this. So right now I've just got it hooked up to 110 back there. You come up here, you turn on the power switch. Give it a second. It's got like a nice little LCD screen right there. So if we come here, we hit home. We can go to whatever that we're doing. So MIG, flux cord, whatever we wanna do. And I really like this because if we go back, we go like MIG steel, it'll say that we need 75% argon gas, 25% CO2. Uh, but let's just go back one more time. Let's say that we wanna do, uh, say we wanna do TIG. So we need 100% argon. We'd hook the torch directly up to the gas source. So let's say we just did that. It would be like, all right, our diameter of the rod that we're using, we can change that to whatever rod size. Um, and then the thickness of whatever we're welding, we can set that too. And it presets everything for us. So I feel like this will be a good machine to learn on power outputs off, everything like that. But it walks you through everything that you're doing. It's going to take me a while to learn how to weld, but the only way to learn is to do it, in my opinion. So we've got some scrap steel laying around that I think Matt and I are both gonna play with the practice on today. We'll see who can do better welds uh, for not welding ever in our lives before. So I think we're gonna go grab some gas. We're gonna grab a TIG torch and some, uh, some welding rod. We're gonna play with this stuff a little bit. So we got like a cheap $45 welding cart. We got the foot pedal for the welder. We got the TIG torch. I thought this TIG torch came with the welder when I bought it. I guess not. Kind of got kind of got honey dicked there too. Uh, got some stick rod by accident. Got the actual like welding rod for uh, TIG welding. And then we have all the other stuff that we had before. So, uh, oh, and we got a giant bottle of gas too, which is uh, kind of nice. It's all argon. So first step, I'm going to get this thing thrown together, this cart, and then we're going to get the welder and everything put on there, get that set up. And then I think we're going to play with it here in a little bit. This is all set up now and this was quite the process. Let me tell you that. So uh, we had to go through, we had to set up this TIG torch. We've never done it before, so Matt and I figured that out by watching some video on YouTube. And then uh, went through, got everything else hooked up, connected, everything's like ready to go at this point. So we should be able to just plug this in, turn on the gas, and start welding. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to weld some steel real quick. I'm gonna see what happens. I've never, huh? On what? Uh, the table. With that vise. I don't know, I've never done this before, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give it a whirl. So we went through and we're still playing with the machine trying to get it figured out, but technically we did well. Technically we did well. Um, we're playing with amperage on the machine a little bit because we think it's a little bit too high and we think our tungsten isn't sharp enough going through this, but we have welded. So none of these look pretty by any means, but technically we have welded metal onto metal. It's not very good, so we're gonna try a couple more things. We're trying to like sharpen up that tungsten right there a little bit more, um, but we're gonna keep playing with this. This is also, that was technically my first time welding on my own without having somebody like directly supervise me. I got hot. Matt, in your opinion, how would you say we're doing? I'm um, getting pissed off at it because I've <laughs> fucking welded with other machines before. This is a fucking so. Well. I, I've welded with Devin's machine, and Devin's machine, I was able to weld. This one's a crap. It's a scratch start. That's our problem. Is it's a scratch start. 
For me to start the arc, I have to you scratch have to... the tip against it. Is it? I thought it was tap. No, it's a scratch. You don't want to tell me tap. It's a scratch start. I, was I mean, they're they're Either similar, way, yeah. but it has to. So it's fucking annoying. We're uh we're learning and uh, struggling over here, so we're gonna keep playing with this and see if we can get anything to stick to anything. Flopping back over to this 10 gauge steel from what we were using before. Uh, with that one, I was just trying to get two pieces of metal to stick to it. I got, I mean, I did it, but then the weld broke off. Uh, so Matt's just trying to fill in gaps right now. We're gonna get this. If not, we'll just go, I'll go get the stuff to make it right there. We've also been playing with like amperage and whatnot over here to try to like different settings to see what's working and what's not working. Uh, so there's a whole lot of trial and error going on right now, but we're gonna, we'll get there. So I'm not gonna lie, I feel, I feel pretty accomplished here. That is outstanding. That is absolutely outstanding. We have successfully welded two pieces of metal together. It's not pretty, it's not pretty, but hey, we did it. Don't touch that, it's really hot. So I think up next, we're gonna go back to Harbor Freight, get this stuff for MIG welding, and we're gonna try MIG welding. Give that a whirl, see if we're any better at that. Apparently that machine's better at MIG welding than TIG welding. Okay, fast forward a little bit. We went back to Harbor Freight and we grabbed the welding spool to be able to do MIG welding. So a lot more success with MIG welding than we were with TIG welding. Um, oh, solely, I think it's solely based off the machine on that one. I'm not gonna say we are great welders by any means, but we are making metal stick to metal, which in my opinion is progress. So I'm gonna be honest, anything that's metal around the garage, I've just been kind of welding to other things. Like I welded that to that. Uh, these are weld, oh, that's still hot. Those are welded together. Is this hot still? Um, I accidentally welded my pliers to this plate that we've been also welding on. I welded a socket to that, uh, welded a socket to that, welded a nut or a bolt to that. So honestly, with never welding before and this being like our first unsupervised welding time, uh, MIG welding's really not that bad. Please give me your thoughts on MIG welding. It's easier than TIG. It's a lot easier than TIG. Everything's wire fed through this. So all of the wire I, here. I don't know about the feed speed. Grab that. So all of the wire is fed through the machine right there. And then it goes out, goes through the gun into the one Matt's holding. Um, we're kind of messing. I turned down feed speed. So we're kind of messing with feed speed right now on the, uh, the actual speed of the spool. Just to see what we like. I like it a little bit slower. Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're feeling it at right now, Matt, but are you turning voltage up? You're gonna burn right through that. You're gonna burn right through that metal. So one thing that I actually really like about this welder is it does give you a lot more confidence when welding. Um, so you feel a lot more comfortable around it. When I first started doing this earlier, I was like super sketched out on the whole process of the, like the, the arc and the metal and everything like that. Super sketched out, but honestly, you get so much more comfortable with it. Yeah, baby. So we're gonna continue to play with this tonight as we go through it. Um, I don't know, this is all new to me. We're gonna try the aluminum next. I'm curious on how we can get aluminum to come out using this. Uh, we only have argon gas right now. We don't have argon CO2, but for aluminum, it's 100% argon. We should be using 100% argon. So we have plenty of scrap aluminum around the garage. So I'm gonna be honest, after playing with this welder a little bit in the MIG settings, after we had the gas on, I have, I'm like actually happy with the welds that I was able to do on this piece of steel. This is a, it's a bottle opener that my buddies gave me a while ago. I do apologize for cutting it in half, but I did repair it. So after we turned the gas on, you can see like the welds look a hell of a lot better than they did before. So like it actually, I don't wanna say it's like stacking dimes as people call it, but I'm gonna call it a pretty clean weld for like my first day like actually welding with that thing. For my first day like actually welding with that thing, I don't think it's that bad. Pretty happy with that. And then the other side I welded also and I ground down. If I were to like powder coat this thing, you'd have no idea that I cut it in half and then re-welded it. But honestly, not too bad. This machine is absolutely terrible at TIG welding because you have to like 
scratch the surface of it to get it to arc and then it just wants to stick to everything but for mig welding really not bad i'm gonna play with this tomorrow some more and try to do some more stuff but this is gonna open up so many possibilities for us in the future when it comes to fabrication stuff like yeah i'm not gonna be able to build like a crazy cool thing with that welder right away but that's gonna give me practice over time to be able to get like the technique down get my speed down and everything as matt and i were going through playing with that welder we noticed that the biggest thing for us was like finding your speed and then matching the wire speed to how fast you like to go or how like quick you prefer to go. We're not professional welders. This is like the longest amount of time that I've spent welding something. I've welded like, oh my God, Matt, we can weld O2 bungs in things now. It's an O2 bung, how hard could it be? I think I have some spares, I'm gonna try tomorrow, but it honestly, it opens up a lot more possibilities for us to be able to do things here, whether it's like bracketry, um, repairing exhausts or like any, anything, anything that involves welding. Like we can do basic MIG welding in here. TIG welding, we're probably gonna have to get a different machine because that one, like I said, it just, it doesn't work well for TIG welding at all. Every time we would try to TIG weld, it would just, it would drag, it would catch, it would weld the rod to the actual TIG gun, but I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions or techniques for like any type of welding, please let us know because we are all ears. We wanna learn more. We wanna be able to do more with this stuff, but I'll link that welder down below if any of you guys are interested in that one. I picked that one up at Harbor Freight. It wasn't the cheapest one. I thought like a multi-process machine would be a good one. Turns out you want one that you're, whatever you're gonna be welding for, whether it's MIG or TIG, just get a machine specifically for that. Don't do what I did and get like a multi-process one, but if you guys like the video, I know it's a little bit different video because it's not like strictly a car video. It's just like trying to learn how to weld and playing with welds and whatnot, go ahead, like the video. If you don't like the video, then you can either not like the video or I guess you could dislike the video. That's entirely up to you. But I'm gonna be doing some access port testing with the 05 SCI here in the next couple of videos, uh, playing with some features that we haven't played with before. So keep an eye out for those ones. Hopefully we can do some 17 STI stuff here soon also. So, but anyways, with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.